What is up guys, Austin Nerd Show here, and we just got done seeing the Venom movie, and so this is going to be our review, so we're going to do spoiler free in the first part, and then I'll say when, and then we'll talk some spoilers and stuff like that. So in the beginning, um, we're just going to say, you know, how we like the movie. And so I'll start off by saying, it's better than I expected. Like, I was going into this because, you know, I had heard reviews. I didn't read anything in particular. Just seeing, like, of course, like the um, Rotten Tomatoes thing. And then just seeing um, online and stuff, people's general reviews. And it was, you know, saying it's not good and stuff. But, I so I wasn't expecting anything going in this movie. Or, like, I wasn't expecting much at all. But the movie isn't bad. It's... Um, pretty decent overall, but I don't. One thing that I really like about the movie is Venom himself. Like to me, if it didn't have Venom in it, I probably would have not liked the movie at all. I thought the rest of the movie was pretty boring, and I didn't like the like setting and the look of the movie, like the way it was shot. Um, I just didn't like that overall. But once they had Venom on the screen, I really enjoyed it because I liked the way he looked. I liked his characteristics, and I just liked him overall it's just whenever Venom was on I really enjoyed it so that's to me what saved the whole movie um, which is um, how good I, I thought Venom looked and how much I enjoyed him overall um, so um, what's your review of it bro I really enjoyed it I which I expected you <laughs> yeah I'm a huge Venom fan but what I really liked about it is the first half of the movie pretty much covered the entire setup to the lethal protector Venom comic run. Yeah, I was going to say, from the movie, um, I don't know if this is considered a spoiler or not, but they, to me, they skipped, a, which I don't know a whole lot about Venom, I just know the bare basics, but it seemed like they just skipped over the whole villain Venom part, like a Venom being considered the bad guy, where he's like, you know, the Spider-Man villain and everything, but it just seemed to like completely skip over that to... I'm just going to be a good guy type thing. Like, there was some issues at the beginning, but then that's kind of like, I'm just going to be where, you know, I'm still do bad things, but it's going to be, co like, controlled bad things. Um, so that's, yeah, you just kind of... I was thinking that the whole time, but you saying that. Someone that knows more confirmed that well, for me. Well, like, when they announced this movie and stuff and you saw the trailers, my main concern was they weren't going to touch on how Eddie Brock ended up with Venom. But the very beginning of the movie with J.J. Uh, Jameson Jr. was like the only survivor and there was a symbiote involved there. Like, that actually happened in the Venom comic. That's how Venom got to Earth was he infected J.J. Jr. And so I really but enjoyed how they did that. skipped over the Spider-Man part of attaching the Spider-Man and then getting switched from Spider-Man to Eddie Brock. Which, depending on which comic series you read, like, him being on Spider-Man was only, like, a ten-minute thing in certain comics. And Eddie was there because Peter got him fired from his reporter job, so he went to a... Which, I mean, it's just like the Spider-Man yeah. 3 movie. It's pretty much that whole But he went story to a bits. church to sulk and stuff, which they talked about him losing his job at the very beginning yeah. of the film. In New York and, ha and running away or whatever they mentioned he did for his girlfriend in San Francisco or whatever. And then another nice little touch that they had in the film that I really enjoyed from the comics that most people wouldn't understand is they mentioned that Eddie had brain cancer. Which oh, in the comics, yeah. Eddie does have cancer, but Venom helps subside the effects of it and yeah. keep it from um, killing him. So that kind of, I guess, just gives you overall... Like I said, I don't know what to say a whole lot about the movie. Um, like I said, I just really enjoyed Venom. The rest of the movie, I, you know... Yeah, you have the whole backstory, which I did like... Because like I said, I, know, I personally know very little about Venom, but the stuff I did know because of stuff I've read about him, they did touch on that stuff in the movie, so I did enjoy... You know, it may not be a perfect adaptation from the comics into a movie but they at least hit a lot of the parts and stuff um, but just in the spoiler free part I'm just gonna go ahead and give I guess a rating I don't know um, I'm not good at rating things but I'd probably say about um, I would say a six because and I mean on like a true scale of one to ten where five is just like you know an average movie it's not good it's not bad it's just right in the middle but this be like I said because of Venom knocks it up a step for me um, like I said, I really want to see Venom more. Like, I want to see him in it. Like, the whole time when it was just showing, like, the fight scenes with him, I was like, 
I can't wait to see that version of Venom fighting a spider, like one of the Spider-Man, so like Tom Holland or whoever they do, whether it's a new Sony one or whatever. I want to see him fighting a Spider-Man uh, character. And so that's what kicks it up, you know, just for, because the rest of the movie is just an average movie. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. But the Venom knocks it up some for me. What would you give it a rating? I'm going to go with a nine. Which I figured you would. And the only reason I say that is because my biggest gripe with superhero movies is they always start with an origin story film. And me being a large comic book fan, like, I know the origins, so they're so boring to me because it's so slow with the start and yeah. everything. And, like, everyone loved uh, the first Avenger, Captain America. That was very boring to me because I already That's knew my favorite Cap Avenger movie of all of them. But I, of course I'm a Captain America yeah. fan and I love the older Captain America compared to new Captain America. But it's like all the Fantastic Four films. Like they weren't bad. Like everyone says they're bad. They were okay, but this origin story was the most intriguing out of all of them. Yeah. So now we've done, we've done with uh, Spoiler Free, I guess we'll get into spoilers. We're actually just going to talk about some of the plot and everything. So this is your spoiler warning, so stop watching now if you don't want to know anything, but we're going to get into spoilers now. So now we're in the spoilers, and so first off, we'll just kind of run through, like, I guess the plot of the movie. So I was, um, again, I'll not even start. So we have a ship coming from space, it's coming back to Earth, and it ends up getting destroyed or something inside, so it ends up crashing into Earth, and it releases, well, I would say releases, it releases a symbiote, because obviously it was, got to attach the, you said the, J J Jameson, yeah, Jameson Jr. son or whatever, and it got transferred into, from him into a, like ambulance lady then from her into an old lady then into a little girl and it comes all the way to america and then gets transferred um into the like mean bad guy <laughs> i can't remember what his name um, uh it's carlton i yeah, say Carl dalton so oh, carlton drake drake yeah um so gets transferred into him and then that of course becomes the big villain of the movie i guess it's not around for very long but um riot which is one of the symbiotes and so it was that ship was bringing back out i assume it maybe went to what is it Cly clintar clytar um, they said they found it on an asteroid okay so this you know there's planet called clytar I clintar was, Something like that, I don't know. It's a weird spelling. And it that's where all the symbiotes live. It's like their home planet, and, you know, some come to Earth, you know, I guess this way it's from the asteroid or whatever. And so they've contained the specimens of the symbiotes, and it comes to Earth, which I did notice that they all, everyone said symbiote in the movie, where in the commercials, like when they first released the trailer, they would always say symbiote, which that was the whole thing when the trailer first came out. Like, why are they saying it so weird? Even though I guess the, like, true pronunciation of is called a symbiote, but we call it with our dialect or whatever, symbiotes. But um, I just noticed that in the movie. Um, but, it, you know, they come to Earth with, I they think they said three versions, and then the one that escaped was four. That or they had four, and the one escaped was five. I don't remember. But three or four, somewhere around in there. And they, you know gather those specimens that didn't escape and bring them back to um, San Francisco where of course the movie takes place and they start testing them on people because I, by the way it seemed like the Life Foundation which was the bad guys company and stuff which remind me a lot of um, what's his name the, uh, Elon Musk like with Tesla seemed a lot like the Life Foundation and then the guy was like Elon Musk and stuff which of course with all stuff going on right now is kind of funny um, but uh, so they're trying to test to put these symbiotes in the thing because they live on another planet and so it seemed like they're putting them in people so that um, and can like form to people so if they can survive here on Earth and with them inside a person, the person should be able to survive on their planet. And so I assume they're trying to set up this whole thing, you know, Earth's going to shit, and so we need to find a different place to live kind of thing. That's what it seemed like, you know, it's got good intentions, but they're doing bad things to get there. And so, of course, they start testing symbiotes, and they just keep, like, killing people and not working and everything. But every now and then, they're, like, fitting into certain people, and they're testing on, like, homeless people and everything. And, of course, Eddie Brock, being a news reporter and everything, gets into the company and he finds out that people have died and so he starts asking. And that's when it shows the commercial, he gets kicked out and all that sort of stuff. But he gets snuck back in by one of the um, doctors working on this whole thing because she feels it's wrong that they're just, you know, 
before they're doing much testing, they're like, you do it on humans and stuff. Of course, the bad guys. And so she's like out like this. So she brings um, Eddie in and he's, you know, looking around and gets comes in contact with this homeless lady he knows from on the street he lives on or whatever. And she ends up spreading the symbiote to him, which turns out to be Venom. And so then he, you know, starts to escape because all the securities come after him. And he ends up escaping and getting back home. And then he starts feeling the effects of Venom. And that starts taking control of his life. And then it's just him trying to get by Venom, you know, feeling all sick and weird and everything. And I like how he acted because he was hungry and so he's wanting to eat people. And then, of course, Venom starts talking to him in his head and stuff. And I was like, you know, he's eating, like, raw food or nasty food and stuff. And... And then I like the whole see, scene he, in the restaurant. He ate raw tater tots, yeah. and that didn't work. So he brought food out of the trash. Yeah, I was gonna say he ate chicken out of the trash, and, and then, then he ended up getting sick. Yeah, getting sick, and then he saw venom in the mirror, and knocked himself out. But then he ends up finding his um, ex wife girlfriend, I think it was, um, with her new boyfriend at a restaurant. And he starts trying to eat food and not liking it. He ends up eating, jumping in the lobster tank and sitting in it and eating a lobster. It was just, that part was funny. And I really enjoyed that whole stuff of him being like split personalities with venom and stuff. Um, but then, of course, they're trying to, um, I forget what happens, but. Of course, people come, the company keeps trying to come after him, trying to get the symbiote back, saying, you took it from us and we want it back and everything. Um, but I like the whole uh, Venom, like, turning and say, like, when, I don't know when this happens. I'm all confused by what's going on. Uh, but he ends up, like, turning and saying, you know, they're trying to do the whole, like, bring these things into Earth to do this thing. But the main guy, Rai, is like the leader of the symbiotes or what he called a team leader, as you would call it here on Earth or whatever. And he wants to go back into space and get more and bring it back and do like whole invasion of Earth. And so Venom's like, I don't want that to happen and you all will die if that happens. And then he's like, and I like how I mentioned that he like on his planet, he's considered a loser and an outcast. And so here on Earth, he can, you know, be one of a kind and be, you know, a, I guess a good person or something and so he wants up stopping that so it leads to our whole thing of them you know going back to the laboratory place or whatever the life foundation and ends up fighting with um the bad guy which ends up getting uh, attached to um riot right. as I mentioned before and so ends up starting to take control and you know trying to want to go back into space and everything and so that's when they come together and they just start fighting each other and I thought that was really cool um, before, of course, we had some other fight scenes with Venom, like him and I think it was like the news building or something, like in the lobby with a bunch of police. And I really enjoyed that's when I was like, this is where I want to see a Spider-Man come in um, just because of the fighting and movement and action he was doing. I thought it was really cool. But then we get into the fight scene at the end where he's fighting uh, Riot and it just looked really cool because getting to see Riot, he could form weapons and everything, which I know a lot of the symbiotes do. They can like form weapons out of their hands and doesn't um, uh, Venom do that sometimes? Sometimes. <clears throat> I think it kind of like how he can also, in certain variations of the comics, he can shoot webbing too. Yeah. Well, it's, he did. I did notice he you... did kind of web. It's traits you learn from now. your hosts. Yeah, but of course, since he didn't go through Spider-Man first, he doesn't have the web shooting abilities and stuff like Spider-Man. But he did, like I said, do... He would, like, shoot out extensions, and it would grab on the stuff and swing him back around. And a like lot wedding. of... Riot made a lot of... Like, he made a mace... Yeah. Like, knights would use, and then he had, like, the... Big axes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and spears. And all sorts of stuff. But... I'll, Multiple times you saw Venom form a shield. Yeah, Venom would do shields. Like we, when he, Eddie was being shot at, he would form a shield to block bullets. And then when like he was fighting Riot, he formed the shield to help block an attack from Riot and stuff. Um, but yeah, that whole scene was really cool of them two fighting along. And of course, just like in the Spider-Man 3 movie, and it, it mentioned it early on, which I thought was weird that Venom would say his own weaknesses. But he's mentioned that um, muse, loud music or sound of a certain like decibel and stuff. And then fire are his two weaknesses, or I guess the weaknesses in general of the species. And by just like as they were like fighting, they of course trying to get into this spaceship to go back into space. And so Venom was trying to stop Riot from doing that. And so they're just fighting along up this spaceship and stuff. But I like how they were fighting. And then all of a sudden they're like, um, symbiotes started like ripping off. So you could see like... Venom and Riot like 
for uh, like being torn off of their host, and then you could see the um, Eddie Brock and the um, Dalt or whatever the guy's name Carlton is. Carlton Drake. Yeah, Drake uh, fighting. They like would punch each other and stuff, and I just thought that was really cool. Getting to see the different forms fight all at once, and then of course, um, of course, skipping ahead some stuff here, but. Um, the, uh, Bro Eddie Brock's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, whatever, ended up, you know, same day because they had told her, that's when Venom mentioned that, his weaknesses of fire and um, sound and stuff. And so she ends up attaching to, like, the sound system, whatever, and, like, turning up the volume. So it ends up separating the two and, you know, causes a whole separation. And Eddie ends up getting stabbed by Riot because um, it, the Ven uh, symbiotes fall off of them. And so Eddie's no longer... in Invincible, I guess you could say, because he no longer has Venom in him, and so does the other guy, but he's able to get his back on first and as Riot, and Riot stabs him and supposedly kills him, but Venom ends up slinking back to him and saving him, I guess, but Riot gets in the ship and starts to escape, but Venom quickly comes back as Venom and climbs up and ends up breaking the ship or whatever and like clawing it i think it was or no some... he used the spear that right that's stabbed. right yeah because they pulled the spear out of him and then i thought he was gonna like stab it through the window so you know it does the whole like alien effect thing where it sucks him out of the um oh, that plane been or cool. whatever but he ended up just jumping off and then just stabbing it into the side of the thing and it caused the explosion fusel, the fuselage yeah. started pouring gasoline and as the rocket went up it ignited yeah the and so it just caught the whole thing on fire and of course the fire completely burned up right so it ended up killing him off and then it also burnt a venom and so um he like venom's falling back to earth as the fires catching up to him and he even says like goodbye eddie or something like that you know making you think he he's going like a parachute, parachute yeah slash shield as he was again. coming off of um eddie, eddie because of the fire being torn off of him and stuff and he's like said goodbye eddie and then form like a parachute type thing and you know whatever and uh so then eddie falls in the water and comes back and then that's the end it shows him and his ex-girlfriend are sitting there and then all of a sudden you hear Venom talking inside of his head so you know Venom's not gone yet and everything and speaking of his girlfriend I forgot to mention I really liked how she became Venom too because when they had him in the hospital they ended up doing the music thing and getting Venom off of him and trapped in like the MRI room at the hospital and then it went through the vents and got into a dog and she noticed the dog and then I assumed the dog got it. I thought she would show up holding the dog but apparently the Venom uh, symbiote switch from the dog into her and so she shows up as venom and it's cool because you know it looks like a female's got breasts and everything so you can tell it's a female and i really enjoyed that she did that and then of course she kissed him and then the symbiote or venom came off of her on back on the eddie and so i really enjoyed that part too because i like to see the different course with the symbiotes and venoms people or whatever there's all sorts of different characters and they're all different colors and stuff and all sorts of different little powers um, and so it'd be, I was wanting to see extra people, but we didn't get to really see anybody else. Technically, we saw like symbiote colors that match other people, like Scream. Um, and I thought the was, blue one kind of looked like uh, Toxin. Yeah, Toxin. There's like all, like I said, all sorts of different symbiotes and stuff. But um, so that's kind of like a run through the movie. I don't know what else to add through the actual movie. Um, like I said, that's just like the main plot points. Like I said, I liked all the Venom stuff out of that. So anytime he was Venom or doing the whole like back and forth talking between the two, I just enjoyed everything that had Venom in it itself. Actually, the mid credit scene was Well, that's really what we're cool. going to talk about next. Um, so then we get to the end credits. Um, for some reason, I was thinking there's multiple things. But um, we get to the mid credits. And then it, um, it before the thing ended, Eddie mentioned that he had... Um, started working for, I guess, a new company or something. He didn't really say because he was trying to like keep it secret from his ex-girlfriend or whatever. And he said he's got this big interview lined up and everything. and But it never says why because she asked and he's like, I'm not going to say or something like that. And so we get to the mid-credits and it's him going to um, San Quentin prison and um, he's telling Venom, this is a me thing, not you, so you need to like stay quiet and hidden and everything i've got this big interview and stuff and so he goes in and he comes across cletus cassidy i believe is his name 
which in which is played by Woody Harrelson wearing a red wig that kind of looked funny, but I liked the way he looked overall. And so he's a red-headed guy, and he's like a mass like serial killer almost, I think. But he ends up becoming Carnage, and he even mentions, um, when I get out of here, it's going to be Carnage or something like that, he said. Because um, he says, I'm going to escape here and stuff, Teddy. Um, so I just really enjoy that. So they're setting up for another movie of either another Venom or possibly Carnage. I mean, I don't think they should, but the way Sony's doing their stuff, you never know. Their next one could be Carnage instead of Venom. Um, but I think that would be cool to see a Carnage movie, which is just a red version of Venom in there. And so that was your mid credit scene. Did you want to add anything? No. Yeah, say so it's pretty, not much to it. It's just, um, what's his name talking and stuff, um, Cassie. Um, and then we get a last credit scene, which isn't really a scene of anything. It's just like a clip from Into the Spider-Universe, that new, uh, like, animated Spider-Man movie, which looks really cool because they're adding all sorts of Spider-Man characters and villains into this, and I'm super excited about that because I love the Spider-Man uh, villains group, I guess you could say, and then all the different Spider-Man characters and stuff, and so that's cool to see. It's just like a clip from that, just like a sneak preview for the movie and stuff, and that's all it was. So no need, unless you really want to see that, but like I said, I'm pretty sure that's just a clip ripped right out of the movie, it seemed like, so there's no need to say for that, but I would definitely say that mid credit scene, but obviously if you're hearing this, hopefully you've seen it already and stayed for it and everything, but I think that's going to be it. Did you have any last things you want to add? Uh, I did want to bring up the in the actual comics when Anne, uh, which is she, the girlfriend, yeah, the girlfriend, she is actually she Venom for a short time, so it even touched on that, which is well, really that's cool. what when it showed it because the Venom had attached. They did a whole thing to the doctor that ended up helping Eddie get in. They had sent a Venom on her, but you, I don't think at that point had seen what happened to her. I'm not sure, but then, like I said, there was also multiple people they tested on. And so when a Venom, a female Venom showed up, I thought, oh, that's like the doctor. Like, there she is. Uh, it's the symbiote took her, and so she's a different Ven uh, symbiote character. But then she kissed Eddie, and it went to her, and you saw it was the girlfriend. I was like, okay, that does make more sense because the whole dog thing and stuff. But when I was there, I was like, oh, they are going to introduce more than just Venom and the um, Riot and stuff as symbiotes in here. Um, anything else? That's, that's I it. think that's going to be, like I said, probably not a really good... It is a review, I guess, telling what happened and stuff. And like I said, I did enjoy the movie, especially, like I said, Venom. I absolutely love the Venom stuff. Like, I'm not, like, a huge fan of Venom. I think he's kind of boring because any it's one of these characters, you know, like Deadpool, that now that it's become... They're more popular. They just, like, plaster everything with these characters. And so I just get bored of them. It's like, who cares about these characters now? Um, and so that's how I felt about Venom. But in this movie, I really enjoyed him. Like I said, I like the whole two-sided um, person. It was like, you know, two faces. So he's got two different personalities stuck inside of him. And I like that whole talking back and forth. And I just liked all the Venom parts themselves. That's what really saved the mood for me and made me enjoy it even more. So I think that's going to be it for our review. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed Venom. If you did, be sure to let us know in the comments down below whether you did or did not enjoy. But if you like our review, be sure to leave us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to see more movie reviews in the future. And I want to thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.